Okay, we are traveling right now westbound on East Carson Street. But I'll tell you what, I've got an idea. Why don't we make this right turn onto 19th Street here. And then we can circle back around and take a look at the south side branch of the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. We'll make a right turn here onto Sydney Street and head back eastbound. Now I'd quickly like to point out to you that the Southside branch is not just any branch. It is in fact one of the original branches that was first commissioned by, then financed by, Andrew Carnegie himself. Now we can make a right turn onto South 20th Street and head back up to Carson Street. Here we will make a left turn onto Carson Street. And all we have to do is head up a couple blocks to South 22nd Street. The Southside branch opened January 30th, 1908, and it was in fact the last of the neighborhood branches financed by Carnegie's original gift to the city to open. Although, of course, it must be pointed out that the Homewood branch would not open until 1910. But let me clarify that for you. The Homewood branch was not financed as part of Mr. Carnegie's original gift to Pittsburgh. It was financed as part of a later gift that he made. Carnegie's original grant to the city of Pittsburgh was February 6, 1890, and it included both the main library and seven branch libraries. Here we will make a left turn onto South 22nd Street and head back north towards the river. We'll beat this light here real quickly, I hope. Now we make this left turn back onto Sydney Street, but heading westbound this time. And we should be able to find a place to park here. And now we begin our step trek along Sydney Street here. And just up ahead at the T intersection is South 22nd Street. As we cross South 22nd Street here, we can see on our left Ormsby Park and on our right Ormsby Recreational Center. Both of which, of course, are named for John Ormsby, who is frequently called the father or founder of the South Side. Now that we're across the street, I can show you some pictures real quickly. This picture shows Ormsby Park, along with the Birmingham Bridge be ramp behind it. The park opened in the 1900s. Ormsby Recreational Center opened in 1939, I believe, and we could see it to the right, along with the swimming pool in the back of the Southside Library. And here's another shot of the swimming pool, along with the Carnegie Library Southside branch, a little ways off to the right in the distance. Hopefully one of these days we can take a look inside of the Ormsby Recreational Center. But for now let's just continue our little trek up South 22nd Street here till we get to the Carnegie Library South Side Branch. And now that we are past the fence in the Ormsby Recreational Center property, we can see the back of the Carnegie Library South Side Branch. By the way, the Southside Branch's address is 2205 East Carson Street, Pittsburgh 15203. 
Now up ahead we can see East Carson Street. Already we can see one difference between this branch and the Lawrenceville branch. Remember this was the last of the original neighborhood branches and Lawrenceville was the first of those neighborhood branches. With this branch Carnegie chose to build it on a main drag in the neighborhood. Even back in the 1900s Carson Street was the busiest thoroughfare on the south side and was also the location of a few streetcar lines. Even way back in the 1900s, a bridge crossing the Monongahela River touched down on Carson Street just to the east of this library. The old Brady Street Bridge touched down right about where the Birmingham Bridge touches down today. In contrast, the Lawrenceville Branch was not built on a main thoroughfare, which would have been Butler Street, of course, but instead was built on a simple residential street. That would be Fisk Street, and the library is about halfway between Butler Street and Penn Avenue, in the middle of a strictly residential neighborhood. Here we see the handicapped alternative ramp to get up to the front door. This ramp was put in many years ago, by the way, long before the 2011 renovation which basically altered the interior of the library. I will talk about that later on once we get inside. Just now here we saw what was probably the biggest change that occurred with the 2011 renovation. The circulation desk is now on the right hand side after you come in. Whereas in the past this library used to have the big battleship design sitting directly in front of you as you entered. As was the common design in these early self-service libraries. Before the 2011 renovation. The inside of this library really did not change much. Notice how the original stacks were laid out so that any librarian behind the circulation desk could keep a watchful eye on them in the days before anti-theft devices. Here is a picture I snapped about 1999. Notice this battleship circulation desk design allowed the librarian to keep an eye on everything in the library and made certain nobody could sneak in and out too easily. I am guessing this door here is an emergency door to get to and from the upstairs, which I will tell you about later on. And here we can see the old mahogany wooden phone booth. I don't think there's a phone in there anymore though. I think people can go in there though maybe and use their cell phone. That's my guess. And down here we can see a section of the library which is becoming increasingly important nowadays. That is the video DVD section becoming increasingly important nowadays for a library because we no longer have blockbuster video or Hollywood video to get movies from. And sure we found the movie Concussion here which by the way you know was filmed here in Pittsburgh mostly. Of course, there's also plenty of audio books here, too. Audio books on CD. And now, why don't we head over here to visit one of the reading rooms, which are near the entrance to the library. There's one on each side, two reading rooms. We need to keep our voice down in here, but we could see that these reading rooms were designed with big glass windows. That way they were quiet inside, which we need to be of course, but also the windows allowed the librarian from the old battleship circulation desk to keep an eye on everything that was going on inside these reading rooms. 
Obviously, these reading rooms today double as shelf spaces as well. By the way, the other reading room on the other side is the children's reading room. Now, as far as the upstairs is concerned, that is where the caretaker's apartment used to be at in the olden days. I'm not certain when a caretaker last lived here, perhaps in the late 70s or early 80s, but there used to be a big set of steps leading up to the second floor, and that's where the public bathroom used to be at before 2011. Today, I believe the upstairs is only used for meeting rooms and for staff lounges. Another public bathroom was built on the first floor in 2011. I am guessing here that the yellow paint that we see up above the bookshelves around the windows was probably chosen because it matches the original paint from 1908. But that's a probable guess on my part. Now we are back out of the DVD section where we got the movie Concussion at, and as we turn around, we can see the teen section right here. Tell you what, let's head on out now, but before we leave, we can uh, stop in at the children's reading room and take a look in there. Again, we see the new circulation desk on our left-hand side, but the wood in that circulation desk is not that new. It is actually made up of the wood from the old battleship desk that sat in the middle, where we now walk through at. The head is the children's reading room. Now, I'll tell you what, let's quickly go over here to our left to the children's alcove in here. This alcove, we can look inside here, is actually historically significant because there used to be a sink. Little washroom in here, and the librarian would make the children wash their hands before they could handle the books in the days before most houses had running water. And in fact, many of these were poor children of immigrant parents, and this was one of the few places they would even be able to clean themselves up at. By the way, the Lawrenceville branch was the first Carnegie Library anywhere to have a children's room. So now we can exit this historic children's reading room on the south side. Let's look around the library here quickly. And then we see the modern anti-theft devices, which obviously they did not have in 1908. And now we can just head right on out back on down the Carson Street. Now we can see the top of the handicapped rampway, and I'm not certain when that was put in. But it was certainly before the 2011 renovation. And again, we can see what a busy thoroughfare Carnegie chose to build this final original branch on. You could contrast that perhaps to the original Hazelwood branch, opened in 1900, which was the 11th funded library to open in America, and the third to final of the original neighborhood branches to open. Like in Lawrenceville, it was built on a quiet residential street. However, the original East Liberty branch, now demolished, which opened in 1905 and was the second to final of the original branches to open before this one. It was also built on a busy thoroughfare much like this one was, which perhaps indicates a change in thinking of Andrew Carnegie's over the 10-year period between the Lawrenceville branch and this Southside branch.